I need to run some queries on 100 million rows from a 200 gigabyte data set. There's just one problem. This data is sitting in a text file. I need to get this loaded from that text file into MySQL, and I wanna do this fast. I do not wanna be waiting around all day. So if you wanna see my process for how I go from text file, pre-processing, and loading into MySQL, stay right here. Sneak preview, it's gonna be a little tricky. So I was browsing the internet for some data that I could use to analyze, and I came across database.leechess.org. This website has over 2 billion games worth of historic data. Pretty cool. But I'm not going to download all of that. In fact, if I tried to download all of that in the format that they give, it would more than fill my whole hard drive. So I'm going to download one month worth of data, which still has over 100 million games in it and then I can get this loaded into MySQL. So the data set that I settled on for working with in this video is from 2021, the month of March, and this data set is 32 gigs and has over 100 million games in it. So I'm gonna click on this to start the download, and as you'll be able to see, it is going to take a while. Three hours later. Now that the data has finished downloading, let's take a look at the file. And I can take a look and see that it exists, and I can also check out the size, and it's 30 gigabytes. But if you take a look, there's a .zst extension at the end of this. The ZST format, or Z standard, is a compressed file format that was actually invented by some engineers at Facebook. And it's also used by a bunch of other orgs like AWS and GitHub, and it's even used in some stuff in MySQL and Postgres. So pretty cool, but this video is not really about compression. So what I just need to do is figure out how to decompress this file. So what I'm going to use is the Z standard command line tool, and I'm going to give it a couple of options here, and then I'm going to tell it I want to decompress that file. Okay, so the file has finished decompressing, and I've got both files here. And if I take a look, you can actually see that the decompressed file is significantly bigger. It's over 200 gigabytes. So this is a really, really large text file. The file that I have here now is just a .pgn. This is actually a domain-specific data format for representing chess games. And so this is something that if I show you how this looks, it is a format that has several lines for each game, and it contains things like the date, the players, the kind of game that it was, and even a big string representing the sequence of moves. So this is good for storing chess games, but I want something in a different data format, something that's more familiar so that I can get this loaded into MySQL more easily. So I wanna convert this into CSV. Now, so far, the process for downloading and decompressing this data has been pretty smooth sailing. However, trust me, it's gonna get a little bit trickier here pretty soon. Now, thankfully, there is a Python module that should make my life a little easier here called PGN2Data. And this allows you to open a PGN file. And one of the things it can do is export to CSV. So I'm gonna try this out and I already have it installed. So I'm gonna open up convert.py and I'm going to bring this module in. Okay, I've got that and I'm also gonna import sys. And then I'm gonna say data equals PGN data. So create a new object here. And I'm gonna initialize it with the file name that I'm gonna give as the last command line argument. And then I'm gonna say data.export, this is pretty simple. And then moves required equals false. And this is so that it does not include the move sequence info, just some of the other info like the players and the type of game and that kind of information that I want. So I'm gonna try this out. I'm gonna time this to on a smaller data set. So notice I have a file there called small.pgn that has about 5,000 games worth of data. And so I wanna try this out to see if it will actually be performant for a big data set. So it's running, it's gonna go for a little bit here and eventually it should finish. And so that took 7.9 seconds. And like I said, that was only about 5,000 games worth of data. So if you extrapolate that out to 100 million games, that is not gonna work well for this use case. I definitely need to find something that is more performant to get this done efficiently. Man, Python is really slow. Really slow. Okay, so the bottleneck here is probably in part due to the library PGN2 data not being very efficient and probably in part just due to the slowness of Python. 
So I wanna find something that is not gonna have me sitting around for a day waiting for it to complete. I want something that I can measure the completion time in minutes rather than hours or days. This might sound a little crazy, but I'm actually gonna to turn to the C programming language to do this more efficiently. C generally, if you write your code well, is much faster, has some great compiler optimizations, and I really just need something basic. I just need to go from PGN to CSV. I don't need a lot of intermediate functionality. So I'm gonna give this a whirl and see if this will run faster instead. So after making a little fix to my script, it should be working now. So I'm gonna compile this with O3 optimizations and get that compiled. I'm actually gonna set the output to convert. And then I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna time convert with that smaller data set. And I'm gonna make sure and send its output to a temp file just so that it doesn't block too much on the screen. And as you can see, that went a ton faster. So it processed about 5,000 games in less than a second, which is way better than what I had before. So this should function in a much more reasonable time compared to that Python script. So even though that took a little bit more work, it is worth it because this is gonna process 100 million games very quickly. So now I'm gonna try running this on the full data set and hopefully it works in a pretty time efficient manner. So I'm gonna say time and I'm gonna give it the convert binary. And then I'm gonna give it the data set and I'm gonna send it out to data.csv. Now I execute that and after I wait here for a couple of seconds, it should give me my first million chess games processed. So that was just a handful of seconds to process a million chess games. This should be much more efficient and should work well. So I'm gonna create this database. I'm going to connect to MySQL using the default root user. And I'm gonna create a database called chess. Now, from here, I'm gonna just create one table to load this all into. Of course, I could get a little fancier with the schema and create a table for users and a table for games, but I'm just gonna keep it simple for this example of loading a big data set. So I'm gonna create a table called chess game, and I'm gonna have a few different data types in here. So I'm going to have a int, or I guess an ID that is gonna be a big int, and I want this to auto, increment and it should be not null. So that's gonna be my ID. I'm gonna have a game type and this is gonna be a var char. Probably I'll use a 64 for this. I'm gonna have a URL because each game in that CSV file supports a URL and I'm gonna make this a bigger one in case the URL is long. I'm gonna have a date and that is gonna be a date format. And then let's see, I want to store the white player's name and that'll be a varchar32. Black player's name, that is also gonna be a varchar32. And then I also want to store the ELO rating for each one. So I'm gonna say white ELO is a small int because these are relatively small numbers that shouldn't be bigger than a couple thousand. And black ELO is also going to be a small int. And lastly, I wanna set my primary key to be the ID. And then I think that is a sufficient table. And it looks like it created it okay. I can say explain uh, chess game and it shows me my table with the types. So now I need to load some data into my table. First, I'm gonna try loading data in with the insert statement. Now I have a feeling this is gonna be too slow, but I'm gonna run an experiment to check. So I have a Python script that I've prepared called generate inserts, and this will load in CSV data from the format that it's expecting with this chess project we're working on and spit out insert statements that correspond to those rows. I'm also going to try this with a smaller subset of the data with 100,000 rows instead of the 100 million to kind of do a timing check to see how well this will work. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So Python three generate, and I'm gonna give it my data small. And I'm gonna pipe this or send this into the inserts.sql file. So then in inserts.sql, I have a bunch of insert statements. There you go. So I'm gonna try this out in my database. So I'm gonna time my SQL with my root user and I'm gonna use the chess database. And then I wanna send in all of those inserts. So it's running and it took 1.7 seconds. So that's obviously not bad, but that's only for 100,000 rows, which is what, one one thousandth the size of my full data set. 
So if you extrapolate that out, that would kind of take a really long time to complete, right? That's something that's reasonable, right? I could wait around that long for it to finish, but that's longer than I'd like to wait. So yet again, we're gonna to have to figure out a better way to do this. So what I'm gonna try instead is using the load data in file command, which hopefully will get this loaded in much more efficiently. So I'm gonna create a load.sql file, and I'm gonna start writing this out. I wanna say load data local in file, and I'm gonna specify the file name. So I wanna do data small, start with data small.csv, and then if it works well, I can try the bigger one. Then I wanna say into table chess game, uh, chess game. All right, so then I'm gonna give it a few options. So fields uh, terminated by, by, let's see, yeah, each field is terminated by a comma. And then I wanna say optionally enclosed by quotes because a bunch of these with how I wrote my C script are still enclosed by quotes. And then I wanna say uh, lines terminated by a new line. Okay, so then I'm gonna create a bunch of variables for the different entries in this CSV, and then I'm gonna specify which rows I want those to go into. So I wanna load these uh, and I'm gonna say, some of these I actually want to ignore, but some of them I do wanna keep. So column one, I wanna keep, column two, I wanna keep, and column three. And then I think I wanna skip the next two, or no, I wanna skip that next one. I want column five and I want column six. Those would be the player names, I believe. And the next few I'm actually gonna ignore. I'm not gonna load all of this data in. There's only some select columns that I'm interested in. And then I am gonna want the player ratings. So that's in columns 10 and column 11. All right. So I've created variables and I think there are a few more rows after this, but I've got the ones that I'm actually interested in. And so now I'm gonna set these columns to be the values that I want. So I'm gonna say my game type, that's the, you know, is it a blitz game or whatever, that equals whatever value is at column one. The URL is equal to whatever values at column two. Uh, the date is gonna be whatever value is at column three, but I want to utilize a conversion to make this work as a date. So I want to say stir to date. This is a function in my SQL and I wanna give it column three and I need to give it the format. So I need to say it's year and then month and then day. So that should work for my conversion there. And then I wanna say the white player is which one? Column five, the black player is column six. And then the white elo is column 10. And then black elo is column 11. All right, so I think that encapsulates everything that I wanted to cover. I'm gonna double check that I got those columns right here. What was my, in my generate inserts? I used nine and 10, although that was zero based. So I, yeah, I think I have my columns correct. And so this is what I'm gonna try with loading in that smaller data set. Hopefully it works out here. In order to do this, I'm gonna use a similar command to what I used before, but I also need to give it the option for local in file. Otherwise, because by default in the client that's turned off that feature. So I'm gonna enable that and then I'm gonna send in load.sql. After fixing a couple of my typos, I was able to execute this and this happened in half a second. So this is an improvement over the previous one. So I'm going to go change load.sql to use the full data set instead, which is data.csv and I'm gonna run it and see how well this works. Okay, so while this is loading, I wanna point out that not only was the load data in file command faster, but it's also actually loading more information into the columns. When I did the inserts technique, I left out a few columns and even then it was slower. So this is definitely a better choice to use for a big data set. All right, so the script finished executing. And as you can see here, it took just barely under seven minutes. So we'll say seven minutes. That's pretty good for loading a million rows into MySQL. I'm gonna try uh, logging into MySQL here and see if the counts actually add up. So MySQL-U root, and I'm gonna use chess, and I'm gonna say select star, actually count star 
from chess game. So if I have everything loaded in, which given how long this is taking, I'm guessing I probably did load it all in, I can go ahead and start running queries on this and doing some analysis on the games, which should be really cool. So the query finished and there are well over 100 million rows in the database. So I'm gonna select star from chess game, uh, limit 10. And if I do this, there is good data in there. You can see that some of these rows are missing the, uh, let's see, the URL and the date, and that's probably from the testing I did earlier. So if I take the limit off, I should eventually be able to see, well, that's probably too many. Let me just set a different limit. Limit 1 million instead. Eventually, I do get to some games that do have uh, usernames in them and have dates in them and so on. So I was able to successfully load a bunch of these rows into the database, and I think we can call this import a success. As a final step, I want to try loading this data into a cloud-hosted planet scale database. So this is going to work in a couple of different steps. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use MySQL dump to get this loaded or to get this data basically dumped out into a SQL file that I can then use as my source of information to load into planet scale. So if I tell it, I want to dump the chess database and I'm just going to put that into desktop dump.sql, execute that. It's a pretty big database, so that's going to take a little bit of time. But after that finishes, you can use this for the transfer of information. Now, I already have a planet scale database configured here with the Lee Chess organization and the Chess database. And I have a main branch that already has the appropriate schema in it. Now, in advance, I prepared an Amazon EC2 instance so that I can load the data from an EC2 instance into my planet scale DB. And I actually already have a dump file uploaded in this instance here. So I can say, this and you can see that I have that dump.sql file and that's what I'm going to load in. So in order to connect to my database, I'm going to use the planet scale uh, command line interface. So I'm going to say p scale and then I'm going to use the connect feature and I'm going to specify the org is my Lee chess data and then I'm going to connect to the chess database and I think I need to specify the main branch and then I'm going to have this run as a background job. So this is opening a connection to that database, but as you can see here, it's gonna allow me to connect through that or to that database using my local host address and the default MySQL port. So I can start bringing this data in simply by saying MySQL connect with my root user and I want to use the chess database and I want to use 127.0.0.1. And then for the port, I want to use the default uh, MySQL port, and then I'm going to send that dump in there. So in order to see if my data is making progress and loading in, I can use the planet scale command line interface in the browser. So I'm going to say select count star from the chess games table. It'll take a little bit to load, but then it should come back and tell me that there's 1.7 million rows loaded in already. Wow, we did a lot in that video from downloading data, pre-processing it, getting it loaded into MySQL, and finally bringing it into a planet scale database. So hopefully you found a couple nuggets of information in there that you'll take away and apply to your problem domain. Thank you for watching and make sure and like and subscribe to the Planet Scale channel and I'll see you in the next one.